Okay, Coach Gerald, thank you so much for being with us on This is Purdue. Um, I'm sure it's been a whirlwind this, this whole past year for you, but tell us how you're feeling right now, your first year as head coach of the Purdue women's basketball team. Um, wow, every, every day I walk down the tunnel or every day I walk into to Cardinal, uh, this feeling of just um, pure joy. You know, like I'm a, I'm a little kid waking up on Christmas, to, Christmas morning to see all the gifts that Santa brought me. That's what it is. Um, it's, it's still surreal. And I, I have this like inkling that, that that's the way it's going to be my entire coaching career here. Yeah, for sure. And you were uh, Miss Indiana Basketball 2003. You're from Beach Grove. What does it mean to you to be back in Indiana? Is that, was that your goal, to, to come back here after your playing career? Um, I never really thought I wanted to coach. Uh, in, until I started playing professionally, and then I just thought maybe maybe this is a path I could do. Um, being from Indiana, coming to Purdue, um, I went to play for the Seattle Storm for three years, played in Europe for seven years, and then brought me back to, to coaching at Marion in Indianapolis. And I probably would have never applied for the job if it wasn't in for in, being for in, in Indy. Uh, but my family is there, and then I had it made at Marion. You know, I could coach a game, go out to dinner with my parents. My nieces and my nephews were always there. My siblings were there. Um, Purdue was going to be the only place that was going to pull me away from that job, and uh, here I am. <laughs> Tell us about how this job came about, how you went from Marion to come over here. Yeah, uh, Coach Versip uh, called me. They were in the Big Ten tournament last year and um, called me, and I met with her and Nancy Cross. We had dinner and just kind of said, you know, hey, this is I've got one more year left on my contract. We do this whole head coach and waiting thing, the way Coach Painter did it with Coach Katie, and just felt like you know this is it was time for me. It was time for me to to make that jump. Um, I always was gonna wonder if I was gonna be good enough to coach at this level, um, if what I believed in on on the court and um, all of that stuff. So it it, it just felt right. Um, the timing was right for me. I'd, I spent eight years at Marion and. Um, we had won a lot of championships um, in, in the conference and in the national scene, but it, it was just time. And, uh, you know, things fast-tracked a little bit quicker um, with, with Coach Versip retiring in September and me taking over. But four months into the job as head coach, I'm just um, living my dream. And, you know, at Marion, were you – did you always dream of a Division One coaching career? I always dreamed of coaching at Purdue. That was that was it. Um, you know, he, I, I always wondered if I was going to be good enough to to coach at at, a, at the Division One level in the Power Five. But it was only going to be Purdue to pull me away from that job. Um, it, it, you don't do this for the money. You don't do this. Um, it, that's not why we do what we do. You know, my, I, I tell people all the time, my, my job might be to win basketball games, but my calling is to help empower and influence young women, 18 to 22 year olds, and get them ready for, for, for their own life um, and for them chasing their own dreams. Yeah, and when you talk about that, were there any coaches that really impacted you and how did they impact you during your career? Yeah, I, um, Christy Curry, she was my coach that, that recruited me here to, to Purdue. and. There was no way I was going to be able to say no to her. Um, she just, the, the relationship, the bond um, we had right away, I knew I didn't want to play for another coach. And it was, it was heartbreaking because she, she left after my junior year and I got to play for, for Coach Versa my senior year. But it, probably the best thing for me, challenged me in different ways I, I didn't know I was ready for. Um, you know, at, at 21, 22 year olds, we don't, we don't, we don't understand all of what's, what's happening in front of us. But looking back, it was, it was a really good thing that happened for me to have the opportunity to play for Coach Verse at my senior year. But um, those two I, I lean on heavily. Uh, I talk to, to Coach Curry quite a bit, um, once or twice a week during the season. And uh, just the impact she's had on my life is, you know, it's, it's beyond, beyond words. And when you talk about, you know, you've played overseas, you played in the WNBA, is there anything that you're bringing from that career when you played professionally into your coaching now? Yeah, I, I always like to th say I'm a student of the game, and I think we all are. Um, and and we're, all, we're all thieves. We all steal from, you know, different coaches and, and different things we see. But I think there's probably a piece of all of the coaches I played for, and, and I've made that my own style, whether it's, it's Coach Curry or Coach Versa, back to my high school coach with Coach McNew, my AAU summer coach, um, playing for Ann Donovan in the WNBA, Brian Nagler, and a lot of European coaches. Um, just different styles, um, you know, what to do and what not to do. Um, but at the same time, um, they've all helped mold me into who I am on the sideline today. 
Are there any favorite stories, you know, from this season about whether you're impacting these young women's lives or maybe it was something that happened on the court? Anything behind the scenes you want to share? <laughs> Oof, put me on the spot here. Um, <laughs> there's, um, you know, I, I think every day there's always something that happens and you're just like, wow, this is, this is, what, this is why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've had some situations this year where, um, you know, we've, we, beyond basketball, um, you know, whether it's, you know, a kid needing help off the court. Um, you know, it, we, we live in a time right now where, where especially our, our younger people who, they, they're in college, but last year it was, a, it was a COVID year, right? So they didn't get to experience that. And now all of a sudden they're, they're thrown right back into it in, in the lives and in the pressure of, the pressure that social media puts on young people these days um, and trying to empower them to mentally get through those things. I think that's the biggest challenge today in, in this coaching. The, the fear of failure, it's, it's, it's instantaneously, right? Uh, when I missed a shot when I played here, Nobody saw it. If I turned it over, if I missed something, nobody saw it until the next day in the paper. Now it's instant. And I think that, that social media aspect of, of our lives today is in, in teaching young people how to be able to handle you know, those mistakes and getting through those. That's, that's a tough part of the job right now. Yeah, and do you think that that's the main thing that's different from when you played here at Purdue is that whole social media? Absolutely, aspect? absolutely. If, if I failed, um, like I said, you didn't know about it until the next day in the paper or unless you watched it on TV. But now you could be anywhere in the world and if I airballed a free throw or missed a game-winning shot or, you know, a, a, a poor defensive assignment or anything, you know, or even you know a game-winning shot, it is instant, and someone around the world is seeing it at that very moment. And um, you know that's that's something that we all know that social media has changed our world in for for good and the and the bad. But teaching young people how to handle that, whether it's f failure or success, um, is a massive part of our job. And when you think about recruiting you know, the right teammates, the right fit at Purdue. What, what is the right fit for you and your team here today? Um, we're going to be blue collar. You know, we're going we're gonna to work our, our, our tails off every single day. Um, I, want a, I want a group of, of young women who bleed black and gold, who knows what it means to have Purdue on your chest. Um, and, and what does that mean? It means that I'm going to do things the right way. It means I'm going to show up on time. It means I'm going to go to class every day. I'm going to do what's right in the weight room. I'm going to take care of what I put in my body. I'm going to be a great, outstanding citizen in our community. I'm going to reach out in the community, and I'm going to help young people, help inspire our youth, um, and, and never cut a corner, right? We're never going to find a way to che We're never cheating here. We're, we're always going to do things the right way here at Purdue. Um, and then when you do win championships and you do have individual accolades, you know, it just makes it that much more meaningful because you know you've done it the right way. Yeah, and you talked a little bit, you guys just played IU um, at Mackey. And I loved your, your press conference afterwards. You said, you know, we're not going to be, we're not waiting around for three or four years. You know, we want to make, make it happen now and be competitive now. I think it got a lot of response on social media. What, is there anything else you want to expand on when you shared those thoughts? No, it, it, was, it was simple that. And uh, the, the auth I hope everybody heard the authentic, authenticity behind that because it was truly authentic. And it, it was exactly what I, I told our team. And um, that game against Indiana was January 16th. I took over seven, September 16th. So that was, our, that was four, month, four months together as a staff, as a team. And in four months, we were able to almost knock off a top five team. Um, imagine what we can do uh, when, we, when we are together a little bit longer. But I told him in September, and I, I tell you right now, and I, I said it after the Indiana game, we're not waiting. We want to get Purdue back on the map when, you know, er, early 2000s, late 90s, I mean, this place was it in the Big Ten. Um, you know, we held the barn burner trophy. It was never down in Bloomington, and it is our job to make sure we get that back and it never goes back down there. Do you think there's any secret key or ingredient that, you know, you can start getting competitive in those Big Ten championships and winning those again? I think it's just hard work. You know, it's it's hard work. Obviously, you got to be a little lucky along the way. You got to be injury free. You got to do all those things, especially now with, in the in the COVID world that we live in. You've got to get lucky in that in that regard. But uh, for the most part, it's it's hard work. It's it's stuff done behind the scenes when no one's watching. Um, you know, we 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 talked yesterday. Um, about the, the everybody saw what we did from two to four against Indiana, 
uh, but nobody saw what we did the day before. Nobody saw what we did the day before. And, and everybody that sees the two to four, that's the kind of effort we have to get in and we have to put in all, every, every single day. And that's the next step for our basketball team and our program is making sure that we're working as just as hard as we did in those two hours of the game. And when we do that, um, it's not going to be an eight point lead with three minutes to go. It's going to be about a 15 to 20 point lead because we know we have done the work and we trust and we have we will have trusted that. What do you think the biggest challenge has been so far in, in these past four months? <sighs> Ooh, um, the biggest challenge probably is just we have a group that that hasn't been together. Um, you know, they, they're still learning my language. The staff is still learning my language. The players are, um, we're, all, we're still learning each other. And we really hadn't been in a moment like that together um, in, a, in a crucial game so far yet this season. And trying to learn on the fly. Um, I've, I've heard other coaches, you know, at the other end of the sideline say to her team, hey, remember two years ago, we were in this situation, we're gonna do this. Well, we don't have anything to reflect on that. We've only got four months of practice. And, and I think that's been the most difficult thing for me is not having all of that time with them. And, but when, when it's there, it's, it's gonna be really special. You know, you referenced how you're following in Coach Painter's footsteps a little bit. You are doing what, what he did with Coach Katie. Um, how does that make you feel? It's really cool, really cool. Um, I, I think I was here my senior year was when Coach, uh, Coach Painter and Coach Katie were doing that transition. Um, and it was really cool to be a part of, uh, you know, from, from the outside looking in. And um, he, was, he was huge for me this summer uh, in, in helping me. You know, we, it was, we were all under the assumption that, it, that Coach Rosip was going to be the head coach and I was going to just be on the sideline waiting my turn. But he was great for me to, uh, I leaned on him. I leaned on Elliot Bloom and, and they really helped me through that. Um, through the process and you know when, when Coach Versa retired um, I was anxious and nervous and excited all different kinds of emotions um, I knew that I was ready and and honestly those two guys Elliot and, and Matt really did a good job of you know this is the best thing that can happen for your program stay with it trust the process and take every little win that you can and and we're doing that and uh, we're probably winning more ball games than people thought we would <laughs> and I love how you know we, we see on social media the men's team is really successful you know you're coming in and and having this awesome exciting season the volleyball team the football team what does this community mean to you, you know, when you look at all these different high-level coaches and supporting you and tweeting at you and admiring you? Yeah, it's really cool. Um, you know, Coach Hondell came in the office yesterday and just to talk to us. Um, you walk by the men's, the men's office and, and, you know, the paints there and, and Terry and Paul and, you know, all those guys, they're, they're the, the family here, right? It's just different. It's just different. Um, you know, Coach Brahms, excitement for for our basketball team um, it, what they did in the fall I think with football women's soccer uh, volleyball and obviously our, the hype around our men's basketball has I think it's helped lift our women's basketball team because we don't want to be the one right we don't want to be the doormat <laughs> of of Purdue athletics and it's helped lift the entire our entire our entire basketball team to, to try to make sure we're, we're chasing those guys and we're staying up with them but um, the, the, the love for each other's programs is true and real and genuine. And we, we const I mean, anytime I can turn on any Purdue athletic sporting event and see us winning, it's, you know, it's, it's everything. It's, it's what makes Purdue so special. Did you have any times in your career at Purdue where you guys were also kind of trying to keep up with the men's or, you know, both enjoying that success? Yeah, we were, um, we were actually the one probably everybody was chasing because <laughs> um, we were really good. Um, we were really, really good. Um, and I think the men were starting to, to struggle and then, then Matt came in and, and got that, the baby boiler group in and really, really um, just catapulted the, the men's basketball program. But, you know, Coach Hondell was, was uh, young in, in his career when I was here. Um, I think at the time, you know, Joe Tiller was here leading the team and Kyle Orton was our quarterback and 
probably a, a fumble away from going to the Rose Bowl um, against Wisconsin. And, you know, I just remember going to all those sporting events, going to the volleyball games were some of my favorite times uh, with my teammates um, out, out at the football games when we're chasing a Rose Bowl championship. Um, it's just, it's always been about the black and gold. And, and you don't know it until you come on campus and you become, you truly ingrain yourself into being a Purdue Boilermaker. But once you do and you live it every single day, it's just, it's a different kind of life and it's just a really special family. Yeah, do you have any top maybe two moments of whether it's on the court or like you said, you enjoyed going to volleyball games? Um, gosh, volleyball games were probably the most the most fun and they're still, because it, it just Holloway is so small and so loud and um, there was no air conditioning back then, so it got really, <laughs> really hot in there. Uh, but those, those were always fun. Uh, for us, you know, my, my freshman year, we won the Big Ten tournament. My senior year, we won the Big Ten tournament. And, and those two moments really stick out. We, as good as we were, we never won a Big Ten regular season title. Um, so I've got, I've got my work cut out for me as a coach. Um, but uh, we're going to make sure more banners fly. I like your shoes, too. The gold. Thanks. Well, I want to talk to you about shoes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I know, or I heard that you have an extensive shoe collection. I do, tell yes. us, Tell us more about that. Um, well, my mom and dad get, well, my mom especially, you don't need to buy any more shoes. <laughs> touche, touche. I don't have a lot of space in my house. Um, but I, I, I've always liked them, right? And, and honestly, it's one of the first things I do when I see people. I always look at their shoes because, ooh, do I need those pair, right? Do they match the black and gold? Um, but uh, I, I just feel like, especially nowadays, shoes really resonate with young, young recruits. Yeah. Um, and because we're in this era where, of COVID era, where we, we're allowed to kind of like dress down on the sideline, sure. right? So you just got a Purdue shirt and maybe some, some sweats or some, some casual pants on. Um, it makes it easy to throw on a pair of J's. Um, and any time I see a, a black and gold pair, I am most likely going to find a way to get my hands on them. <laughs> Do you have a favorite pair? Yeah, my, my mid ones, um, the, the shoes I wore against Indiana, um, they're, the Jordan ones, they're, um, just mid mid height, um, but the the gold the the gold really really pops there. <laughs> I know, when, when I saw these shoes, I was like, I have to get these. Yeah, I can't I'm, not I'm get a big them. fan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, when we talk about social media, other obviously we talked about the coaches are are supporting you and this whole athletics community is supporting you, but the fans are really excited and you know people that might not have been paying attention to women's basketball are really excited and paying attention. What does that mean to you? It's, it's special, it's humbling, um, but, but what makes it so exciting is I'm excited for our team. Um, I'm, I don't know that I've ever seen a student section like that, um, not when I played here. I remember when I turned the corner and walked down the tunnel to go onto Mackey and I saw the students. I mean, I, pro I can't say on camera what I mumbled to myself because <laughs> I was just, I, I was so taken away by, by that. And, the atmosphere, um, and my biggest hope is, I, I understand that the women's, you know, sometimes people can misjudge the women's game and what it can bring because we don't dunk, we don't fly around, we don't do that. But one thing about our basketball team is that we kind of do fly around on the defensive end and we play really, really hard. And I think we can be pretty entertaining to watch because we do those things. My hope is that those students think, man, this, this group is fun to watch. Um, and if we get just some of those guys to come back and maybe bring a buddy and just really fall into to watching our basketball team. But it's, it's, it's really, really cool for our team because I, I know how hard we work every day. Um, and, and to come out there and, and with that kind of crowd and that kind of support, um, whether it's in the game, in the community, social media, whatever it is, this group really deserves it. What do you tell the team, you know, after a rough loss, you know, but it was such a great game, right? What, what are they feeling in the locker room and what do you have to kind of tell them to get them ready for the next game? Yeah, I mean, they feel hurt, right? And they're, they're heartbroken. And I'm not so sure that's how it's been in the past, but you, I walked into the, to the locker room and you could just feel the hurt, each, each one. Whether they played or not, you could feel how much they poured into that game and, and how hard it was to, to walk away without a win. Um, that's that's when you know you've turned the corner, right? When when something like that really hurts you, 
And, um, you know, the message was, it was, you know, hey, guys, we're right there. It's one play here. It's one play there. Um, we're right there. It's right now in front of us. You know, we would take the rest of the day and, and let it hurt. We took Monday off after the game and, you know, let it hurt. But, but we came back to work the next day and, and we got after it. Um, the message was, you know, let's, let's let this be the one that fuels that fire. When we, when we don't feel like we can practice, when we're, when we're sore, when we, had a, when we have a big exam and we're stressed about something, um, you know, off the court. Let this be the one that every time you walk onto the court, this is the one that motivates you to know that there's a loose ball, we're going to jump on it. There's a rebound that has to be had, we're going to jump on it. And um, I have a feeling that uh, we're going to respond the right way and it's going to be a fun rest of the way. Do you have any games that you're looking forward to most for the rest of the season? Always the next one. Always the next <laughs> game. Um, but uh, I'm always looking forward to going down to Bloomington to see if we can get those guys. <laughs> That'll be a fun game, I'm sure. Is there any trait that defines you as a player throughout your career that you would also you know, say that you're bringing into your coaching now? Um, I think two things, um, calm and confident. Um, I think if anywhere, anyone watched me play, I was, I never got rattled, you know, you know, I would get excited and, you know, there was some fire underneath me, but always stayed calm. Um, things are never as good as they seem and they're never as bad as they seem. Just trying to live in that moment right then. Um, and then confident, um, confident that I, I know that all the work that I've done, um, as a player was, I, I felt good about. And then as a coach too, all the film that I've watched, all the preparation we put into our team, um, just confident in, in what we're doing. And, and um, you see that, right? On the sideline, it's you know, a stressful situation and I'm, I'm gonna be calm over there I, and, and confident. I want the team to, to really feed off of that. And I, I think those two things really sum up who I was as a player and who I am as a coach. And I guess finally to sum it up, you've been talking about it the whole time, but what does this Boilermaker spirit and this community mean to you? The Boilermaker spirit is is everything. Um, you know, every time I, I, I every time I walk down the tunnel and the the chills I get, every time I turn on Northwestern to to see Mackey Arena, the chills I get, um, the environment at Rasa the the crowd at Holloway, the the fourteen thousand strong at men's games. Um, there's just something different about the black and gold. Um, and, and like I said, once you're in it and you become a part of that family, you know that you are in it for the rest of your life. And really, there's nothing better than being a Boilermaker. Do you have anything else you want to share with our oh, listeners? No, this is awesome. Okay. This is great. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Just I'm, I'm so thankful for the support. And I know that, um, you know, we're not, we're not a few years away. It's right here in front of us, and we're going to get this place back. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thank you.